Hey, hey, welcome. What is good, Sean? Welcome to the Inner Circle. Welcome to the Inner Circle preview show if you're here watching it with us. Um, so we told you last week, every single week, noon on Tuesdays from noon to 1 Eastern time, we go live in the Inner Circle. This is just a quick little live stream for everybody out there to say, what are these dudes talking about and what is this Inner Circle? So today we're going to disrupt the way you think about business. We're going to tell you why you're doing it all wrong. You're thinking about it all wrong. And but don't worry, there's hope. We're going to help you fix it. So, Sean, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you. Where are we today in the world? Uh, this is we are practicing what we preach. We are on site. We are with a client. It is a disaster behind me, but that's OK. I'm in a, uh, a well lit warehouse with some sketchy Wi-Fi. So if I cut out, you uh, <laughs> you might have to take over for a second. We'll see what happens. But no, we're we're on site. We're actually I'm right down the road with you. And we got the chance to have dinner last night. I'm still mad about dinner because of that magic trick. So <laughs> if, you, if you watching are sensing a little bit of tension between me and Sean, he showed me this magic trick with cards and I couldn't figure it out. And he doesn't look like a magic trick card guy. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm a little pissed off today, but here we are anyway. Well, here's another magic trick. I'm gonna find a way to make that a compliment. Somehow I can, <laughs> I can turn any, I also can turn any comment into a compliment. Right, That's so. right. Thank you, Brandon, yes. But no, that looks like a room full of opportunity behind you. That's what that is. So yes, sometimes, uh, oh, looks like um, Brandon, you might have some Wi-Fi issues there. I got a notification on my We're side. Good. But anyway, um, that looks uh, looks like a room full of opportunity there. And sometimes being a, a fractional COO means we're actually physically there with you. So yeah. uh, it's beautiful. All right. Well, I'm sure that good things are happening there. So. Today, Brandon, um, I think we're going to talk about, so let's ground everybody listening again. So we, we are talking about the harmonious business architecture that, un, that runs underneath every business. You might know this architecture in the traditional institutionalized format of things like strategic planning, process, change management, okay? We don't call it those things because that traditional model is all built on flawed premises and evolved in a way that is not conducive to cohesiveness. Anybody who works in any large institution knows this to be true. Okay. And so we instead, first disruptive that we do is we talk about these terms in a different way so we can change your focus and have you think differently. So things like uh, uh, strategic planning would be navigation. Leadership is really inspiration. People management is really home, giving them a, uh, optimizing the humans there and giving them a meaningful environment in which to do that work. Okay. So that is the harmonious business architecture. Today, we're going to start where you should always start with disrupting some of the ideas and concepts you have around navigation, which is strategic planning. Remember, we talk about things not in a bubble here because it is more like a matrix, more like a spider web. So if you have the 10 disciplines, the leverage really for each of them is in the links between these things. And so for strategic planning, you will see, or as we call it navigation, it is linked to every one of the other 10 fundamental disciplines in your business. So the discipline of strategic planning is what we're talking about today. And inside of the discipline of strategic planning, there are three primary elements. And those elements are mission, vision, and core values. We're starting with core values because that is where you should start. So Brandon, ready to rip and jam on that? Yes, so we're gonna go, we have 30 minutes here. We're gonna stop at the top of the hour. We both have a hard stop. Uh, if you wanna join us in the inner circle, this is the website on the screen, whatif.com slash inner circle. That's where we're going to cover all three of these elements um, in depth today and really iron out what your business should look like, where you should start. So, yes, let's dive in. Let's well, talk core about values, core values. Yeah. So core values. Well, so today we're going to just be talking core values mm -hmm. because inside we're going to go, we're going to go super, super deep. So right, today, right. right here, we're just talking about some of the concepts we're going to be playing with inside uh, the inner circle. And as anyone inside the inner circle also knows, in their dashboard, we will then have assigned to them the takeaways from today. Mm -hmm. And then with your coach or with me, we will then go through what are those steps? What do you need to be doing? So that there's always action after everything that we're talking about here. And we help you through it so that you get the absolute best result. But today here, 
not inside the this is the what the outer circle the outer dimension <laughs> what is this the outside looking in i don't we haven't figured out a name terrifying out here <laughs> most people operate here yes actually that's what i want to talk about so we're yes we're going to dive into core values i personally understood the value of having core values but i didn't really grasp it until i saw the absence of core values in a business and i watched it fall apart like almost instantaneously so um i i want to hear where you want to start with this because Again, like I said, I, I knew it was important, but I didn't understand just how important. So explain that for everybody watching. So what like, will the be the importance of core values? Yeah. So I think more and more people are starting to understand this because they're seeing some titans of industry be brought to their knees because they violated one of the fundamental pr principles we teach, which is that the core must stand above all. If you lose your core values, everything else falls away. Now, some people, so here's the here's the institutionalized version of this is that you know you have mission, vision, and core values. And a lot of people at least used to, you know, that was the order they were tackled in. And the core values were you they were like five words, ten if they if they did it by committee, right? Because no one of us is as stupid as all of us. So let's get in a room and and so you got their ten there and their platitudes. And that's where they are. And then they're bandied about every now and then. Well, remember, we spell integrity with an I because it starts here. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. That actually would be better than what they actually do. Right? So it's integrity and trust and I don't know what's up. Yeah, I was going to say, that's typically what a core value is. It's like one yeah. word. It's a buzzword. And that it has no meaning or tie to the people in the building. Yeah. But that's not, that's not right. And so core values... So we start with core values because those should not change. There should be flexibility in how they're written as to how they can be manifested in the world. But the value itself should be immutable mm -hmm. and not just a word. They should be behavior modifying or at the very least behavior directing statements. So if I say to you, um, you know, customers first. I don't know what that, I don't always know what that means, depending on right the situation. You're like, you gave them what? Well, I just did. I mean, I know the bet. Okay. Everyone shows up to work every day, wanting to do the best job they possibly can. And in the absence of direction and leadership, they will find their own way. Okay. And with the best of intentions, things can go really wrong. And I work with, as an ancillary thing to what I was doing with this large company, I also discovered that there were some well-meaning people who had said, oh, no, it's easier if we just skip this part of the process. Easier for whom, right? Well, the customer, especially, and the customers always come first. They had inadvertently removed the very part of the process that was the reason they would pay us. So there was like an, uh, and by us, right? I'm like inside the walls looking at this, right? Saying, so, and then once you point that out to them, they're like, oh my God. And I told like, I told the next three people that were hired to the team that that's what I was doing. They're like, okay, well, let's patch that up. But of course the clients were saying anything because they were like, this is great. We're getting blah, blah, blah for free. And, okay. So, um, it should be direct behavior when you're not there. So this is why when core values are used, this is another value, core values are used appropriately and written appropriately as behavior directing sentences or phrases. You should be able to go on vacation as a business owner and come back in two months. I don't recommend you doing this, but you could, and then say, well, how, how, how did things go? Because they will fill in the gaps of behavior that are left in the processes or situations that were not covered. Okay, so we wrote down all our processes. You know what to do. You've got your procedure man manual. You're good, Brandon. I'm going on vacation. Yep, I'm good. Go on vacation. Something happens that wasn't thought of ahead of time. We didn't plan for it. What do you do? Well, customers first doesn't help me as much as 
we do what's right for the customer, even if it's not in our best interest. Okay, I know, and I'm not saying that's what it is or should be for anybody, but I'm saying that tells me more what to do so that when I come back and say, what happened? Well, this blew up. How'd you handle it? I know we could have done this and that probably would have saved us some of the money on the shipping fees, but this is what I did because they always come first. Okay. Okay. Even if I don't really agree with it, and in that situation, it sounds like would, but let's say I don't, I certainly can't fault you for acting on one of the core values because the core covers everything, the core overall. And when companies, even if you can't articulate their core values, if they demonstrate them enough to the world, we get a sense of what they are. We, we know who they are because I see it manifested in every interaction with their people. And it should be a part of their marketing and their messaging. And when a company does something for whatever reason, social causes or is the, is the what's happening lately, right? Um, what are you saying? What are you hinting at? Yeah. <laughs> so when Budweiser or when Bud Light tries to, to do something that they thought was a good social cause, it violates the core. Whether you think it was a good thing to do or a bad thing to do, it doesn't matter. If it violated the core that their end user thought was there, you, we see what happens. You don't have to ask me, right? We yeah. all know it took this company to its knees because, and they were like, well, what? We thought this would, no, you didn't think, you didn't think anything. Cause if you thought first from the core and then your end users and then started making decisions, you wouldn't be in this mess. And but, that's a perfect segue into why the architecture is called harmonious because in that particular situation and in any situation where a company violates the core, you have dissonance. This architecture is called the harmonious architecture. You can't have harmony with dissonance. They can't coexist. So anytime a company violates what it puts out as its core values, you have dissonance and people know immediately. That's why there was so much backlash with that situation, with other situations. And it could be anything. It, if you violate as a company, your core principles and what you tell the world you do, there is dissonance. But also on the flip side of that, the world knows your core values by what you do without saying what they are. So if they're different internally than what you display externally, your customers only see what you do externally. Yes. These, this is the volume on the dissonance. Yeah. So one level of volume on the dissonance is I told my employees, here's our core values. And then I show up differently as a leader. And that's how, that's how core values attach to your leadership which we will get into this afternoon. So there's, I say these things, but then I don't do them and I expect them of you or some people, right? These are all the different layers of, the, of how the dis, how just noisy it can get for people. Yep. And then there's the, here's what we as a company all say, but don't demonstrate outside the walls to our customers. And then there's the, well, we say it and we don't demonstrate, I mean, we demonstrate it most of the time and then suddenly decide, Hey, this month we're going to do this thing. And, and then everyone from employees, everybody from inside the walls, outside the walls is going, I don't know what this is. And the noise is too loud. I'm tuning out. I'm done with you product service, whatever it is that is violated some kind of the covenant of commerce, which is who you say you are and what you say you will do both need to be true, right? Of yourself, your product, and the experience I will have with it, both during and getting it, acquiring that service or good, and my experience with it after must all be harmonious. And that's just that part, that, that core value being harmonious. Right. And that's, that's the integrity of the whole, the value, each individual value is integrity is doing what you say you're going to do when, and how you say you're going to do it. If you say your core value is customer service, and then you have the customer service of, we'll use it just a famous example, Comcast from 10 years ago, infamously terrible customer service. Now they've turned things around because you can, but if you say your value is customer service, then you act like that you have, that's where the dissonance comes in. So 
what do you do as a fractional COO and consultant and with our clients here, a little tease, because we're going to go into this deeper in the inner circle, but what's the first thing you address if you go into a company and you see that there is distance between what they say and what they do? Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you were going to ask me how I um, get them to do it right from the start, but that's good. No, we'll start with the, it, with this because, um, you know, I, you ha you first ask the question of the leader, you know, what are your core values and see if they have to rifle through something, pull it out, see if they know it chapter, chapter and verse that, that are, that already will tell you, or they go, yeah, I've heard about core values, but there's no real value in them. It's just the thing you put on the wall. Okay. So we know where we're meeting them with that. But if they say this is what they are and they're an actual word and a phrase and they look good, then then I can already just against the other business architecture diagnostic question, the bad results that we have. So we have a diagnostic that I've used forever with businesses of every size that tells me, gives me a starting map to say, here's probably where some of your problems are. Okay, we give that out for free. So please, if you can hear me, take it. Um, but unless you're like 12 and yeah, but if you're starting a lemonade stand, please take it. Right, take it. So caveats. So uh, we start there and say, I already know if this is a, if it's, it'll be pretty clear if that die is not running properly through the system to say, you're telling me these are the things that you hold dear and your problems are in those very areas. So this must be very painful for you then. <laughs> and if they're, if they say, these are the things that I value more than anything, and I see the problems are in in spots in their in their architecture that are ancillary to these spots. Then I go, I un I understand them, right? You're still living these things, but it's not helping you, right? Every single one of these is is the customer is always right. There's not a single thing here about how anyone else is supposed to behave, right? Like the customer is always right. Customers for anybody. We love our customers till it hurts. I've, I've seen this where they just kind of want to hit that same message. Well, I wanted to make make that point. Well, you got it. And now everybody is bending over. Backwards. You've got exactly what you asked for and incented. And we're going to change this. We're going to make it more a more balanced equation. OK, so um, that's that's just they they weren't sure how to how to balance it out right and maximize it. to mo So that's but if they are saying one thing and doing another then we have to have that hard conversation. Now it's easy be if you have the, the diagnostic results because we can say, I didn't tell you your business operates this way. You told me it operated this way. And so we can argue about whether or not your answers were correct. But if these were your answers, then it is true. You are not living these values and here's how. And if, the, if, if they can't get past that conversation, then there is no more conversation. They need somebody else to help them mm -hmm. because they have, there has to be that moment, that epiphany, that, what if it isn't what I think it is, right? What if, what if I am, what if I, we are not living those things? Now that you, now that you mention it and have 11 teen examples of me not doing it, I guess I gotta, and if they're not ready to have that big kid conversation, then we couldn't help them. So that's, that's how that, and, but that see so you see how quickly that has to, that's why that has to be one of the first conversations we have with people yeah. because how would we ever be able to diagnose their problems or advise them on what to do if I don't know what are the things that they and all of their employees on this mission believe in their heart of hearts? If anything is not in support of that, it will not last. Right. And we're encouraging people to hire based on those. Put your your core values in your hire, we're getting into we're getting into into, into a little of the doing, but right, we're doing this this afternoon, coming up with a complete plan so the core values are fully maximized in every discipline in your business. But one of them is you're hiring to these, saying, "Here's our five core values." Brandon, you apply for the job as part of this. Which of these fives resonates most with you? Why? And how do you expect to manifest that and demonstrate and demonstrate that to your coworkers here? How many times have you have ever been asked that question, applying for a job anywhere, anywhere, or ask anyone who does? It's right. So, but I want to know that more than anything else. Right. 
because if you can't, if you're not jazzed up about this, and you're just like, oh, yeah, okay, don't work at EMS if you're not into hiking and camping. And because when we tell you, hey, you can bring, and you can bring your dog in, and you can take naps, naps in a tent. I'm allergic to dogs. If you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh that sounds terrible. Really, I'm here. I'm here for the 401k and the dental. <laughs> you're not. not you're not. Work. You're not. You're not last. It's just not a good fit. And so, what jazzes you up about these? Because we are living them every day, demonstrating them every day, and expect you to do those same things. And you will be rewarded not just on hitting the numbers of things, but also in your demonstration of these values. So you better be jazzed up about them because you're that's gonna be a big part of your job. Not yes, you pull a lever and you push this button. That is part of your job. But this is part of your job. Le demonstrating these core values in service of this mission is the job. And then you pull levers and push buttons to do it. That's a that is a much different hiring conversation. And that gets you people who are really ready to walk through walls for you and fill in the gaps if you haven't mastered all the other nine disciplines. Yeah, and that's you something- You yourself up to start with that. Right, and you've seen, you've been in the walls of the Fortune 50 and beyond, and you've I've seen it from the outside. So I've seen a number of companies that have a core value of, uh, integrity or accountability and the little sentence behind it is something like to maximize the profits of our shareholders or something like that who in their right mind as an employee of that company is going to hold that as a core value because it has nothing to do with them or their core values that's why the argument here that we're making is the way you're approaching your navigation is completely backwards it needs to start with your internal team and culture and be broadcast out, not the other way around, like most of the Fortune 500 do it. Yeah, and the and the and the giant businesses have a whole different set of dynamics that most people are not dealing with. Um, and they're there; they were there when they got there, and yeah. they'll be there when they're dead, kind of thing. And and varying companies, you know, you know intuitively the ones that take them seriously and demonstrate them from top to bottom. You just do. We don't have to name them here and play with that here because this afternoon, again, um, we're going to be, if we're teeing people up for that, I want to make sure that they're focused on. Um, don't worry. We know that the large ones do it and need it, they've, that they've understood that it has some value, how well they have crafted them and demonstrate them and, and allowed them to permeate every element of their business is the stock market will tell you that scoreboard and then um but so but today is going to be how to brush up the ones you have polish them up make them more powerful where to start if you don't have anything and then you know how to take them be more powerful how to get buy-in because you've already started the thing you're not hiring people and then how to take it forward how to use it in your hiring management promotion termination marketing protection <laughs> All yeah. of these. And the, the whole reason I bring that up is not to compare to the Fortune 500 or 50, but it's it's as entrepreneurs and even in business schools, that's what we look at as an example. And, and what we're saying is that it's not the right format to create this stuff. What we're teaching and what we're going to dive deep in in six minutes is is how to do this the right way to have a more effective company and culture. And I want to bring this back up on the screen here, which is. It's so crucial to understand, and we've mentioned this, we mentioned this in our challenge, we mentioned this last week, the difference between what we're talking about here and uh, a typical, whether it's a fractional COO or consultant, uh, or even business and MBA course in college, is these disciplines are important, but what we understand and what we're telling you is it's how they connect to each other. And you, you touched on something very important before that I wanna highlight, which is when you're going into a company and you notice that there or they tell you that there's problems in different areas. Let's say they have a leadership problem. They have a people problem. They have a measurement problem and a process problem. We can sit back and we have 10 of these slides and we can say, OK, if they're telling us there's problems in these four areas, what are the areas that touch each other and how do those connect? 
Because if people have problems in those four areas, we can immediately eliminate probably three of the four and say your real problem is found in your strategic planning and navigation. So we can, people address the surface problem, just like going to the doctor. If you have a cut, put a Band-Aid on it. The problem's deeper. So we can go to the source quicker and fix it, and then those areas resolve themselves. So I want to touch on, again, real quick before we dive into the call, just emphasize why this is so important because it touches every single discipline, other discipline, and people look over it or they, they model the broken system. We, what we're emphasizing here is that there's a different way to do it so that your company is set up for success from the beginning. And that's why you need to do this. I would say at about core values, strategic planning as a whole, navigation as we call right. it. Um, core value and core values as the subset of that, as the 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 power generator of this, is that um, if you get your core values right, it does not mean that every other discipline will be right as a result. But if you get core, if you get the core wrong or you violate your core then none of the other disciplines will be right let me say that again if you get core values right it doesn't mean everything else is going to be perfect it's going to be a lot better than neutral we'll say that right so if you get core values right you're going to get a lot of benefit but then might not all be right if you get core values wrong you will get nothing else right Yes, definitely. Okay. Let that sink in. Yeah, that, that is, <laughs> that yeah. You can't say anything else on it. That That's the most important thing to, to understand about it. We could spend... We and could you spend know five that days. because yes. companies that have been there, stable, solid, that have violated it, have blown it, blown the core of their business apart. Yep. It's not just their core values. It's the core of everything. Mm -hmm. the, the whole value proposition was predicated on you. You believe these things? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's listen, enough said. We're gonna dive in. We could we could spend five days, we could spend five weeks on on just strategic planning and and even core values. There's so much to unpack here, and we're gonna do that uh for the next hour inside the inner circle. So I'm gonna put this on the screen one last time. If you want to check it out, come join us in our sandbox inside the inner circle. Today we're talking about core values, how to make them, how they link to every other area of your business, how to make sure they're right, and you get your first 30 days free when you sign up. So this is an incredible mastermind. We have luminaries and expert guests that come on with us that are going to dive deep into your business. So Sean, before we jump over there, we got a couple of minutes left. What else do you have to say about specifically core values and uh, tee us up for next week? What are we going to talk about next week too? Uh, right. Uh, pick five to seven of them. Five. Five's good. Four's weird. Seven's too many. Ten is like, shut up. Five. It's memorable. It's easy to remember the five. Make them memorable sentences that that tell me what to do when you're not here. Not instructions. Those are work instructions. Just give me something that is guidance. Define what you mean when you say integrity. Teamwork. Tell me what that means. Right. Every problem is all of our problems, and blah 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 should. Blah. Okay. Tell me what to do. So that's it. Five of them. Make them something that. To not have this, you'd feel gross. Like, and you would be proud someday if someone giving a eulogy said, and you know what? Sure, they weren't a good gardener. And yes, their meatballs were terrible, but <laughs> they built a company that stood for this, this, and this. Tear, then now you're onto something. Start with the tears. <laughs> Start with the tears. Start awesome. With, starts with we'll start with the amount of you and and don't stop till you're grind. <laughs> now we're somewhere. <laughs> okay, go. I love it. Awesome. Well, if you're not ready to hop over in the inner circle with us, open your dashboards, get your core value section out and ready. We'll see you in there in just a minute, and we will see you on this live stream next week. We're gonna have another preview show of the inner circle. Come join us. What if.com/slash inner circle. We will see you inside.